Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. I wanted to make a quick corrections video since there were a couple of factual mistakes in my original assessment of the game. So what I decided to do was put this together. Now, I'm not monetizing it, for those of you wondering. Obviously, I shouldn't be paid for correcting mistakes that I made. That seems like a rather unreasonable thing. But I would like to point towards those mistakes and give you a couple of corrections. So when the video was recorded, it seemed that this setting right here, image quality, was set to high instead of extra. It's pretty annoying because you would think that high would be, you know, the highest, especially considering that if you compare it to, say, an acetropic filtering, it only goes to high. There's a lot of inconsistency there. Same with water map resolution. There isn't extra there. So I assumed that when I went in there, considering I clicked alt optimal video settings, that it would actually go up to where it should be. Turns out it didn't. So this means that the image quality that was shown in the video was not as good as what it can actually do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what the game looks like. I'm going to show you the same map that I was on. And you can then kind of judge for yourself because I'm going to put a little bit of footage from the old video in and I'm going to compare the two. Yeah. So you're going to be able to get a bit of an impression of the difference between extra image quality and high image quality. I just want to make sure that the game is represented fairly. I may not like it, but that's not a reasonable excuse for that. Also, a nice little fix, by the way, that you can use to stop the freezing. If you go offline, I say nice little fix, it's more of a workaround, you should never have to do this. If you go offline on your Steam friends, it will stop the freezing. This also, of course, means you don't have access to your friends list to invite people into parties, which is horrible, but it will stop those freezes from happening. Hopefully they fix that, because that's absolute nonsense. All right, so I'm going to create a private match here. And I'm going to throw some bots in here. I'm going to go all the way up to... Uh, let's see, there we go. That should be reasonable. So that's a fairly large game, which should, of course, tax the system a little bit and show you exactly what it's supposed to look like with absolute maximum on. I think, actually, I may have missed another setting, come to think of it. Let's go to Options. If I recall correctly, you can actually push that up even higher. Yeah, HBAO+. Plus. So, I'm never, I've never really been the biggest fan of screen space ambient occlusion, but for the sake of testing, I'm going to push this all the way to the maximum. Obviously, I can't run this with SLI on, and I expect the frame rate to suffer as a result of fraps, but I have also done tests prior to running fraps to make sure that I know what the kind of frame rate that you can expect will be. Every now and again, we have people say, oh, you, well, it's because you're running capture. That's why it doesn't perform very well. Now, I always do a very lengthy test without the capture on before actually doing my capture. So the performance that I get will be significant and it will be relatable to what you would expect. Okay, we can make sure we get the right map. I believe it's, what was the one I was playing on? I think it was Octane, yeah. So this is the exact same one that I was kind of showing you the texture quality on. We're going to go with this and uh, just put a random password on there to make sure nobody can get in. And there is the team deathmatch. All right, let's get into it, shall we? Some people were saying that the game is not hard locked to 90. If that is true, then I cannot find a way to get it past 90, honestly. I, I am this time around actually running it with the field of view modification off which is going to be terrible, by the way. I can't really manage that just to demonstrate that it isn't the field of view modification that actually affects the frame rate or affects something like the visual fidelity of the title. So you're going to see things really zoomed in, which is going to be very difficult for me to play, but you know, whatever, we're doing it for demo purposes. Ah... <sighs> It was bothersome, really, because I needed to get this video done kind of to warn people, I suppose, before I left, and I'm getting on a plane very soon, so I got this video done as quickly as I could. But that's what happens when you don't respond to requests for review code prior to the release of the game. People are going to have to rush, and that sucks, doesn't it? Okay, so as you can see here, this is the version with the extra image quality going on. If we're to look at sort of individual textures, I mean, I'll just, these are regular bots, I shouldn't have too many problems. You'll see, you know, fairly low res textures across the board, pretty much on anything on the outside there. And some people might be saying, oh, you know, it looks completely normal. No, not really. I think that if you're a stickler of a texture quality like myself, you're probably very close to a reasonably sized 1080p at least monitor. And if you're watching on a television half a room away, you're probably not really going to see the difference. 
Frame rate right here, by the way, is crashing all the way down to about 30 in places. Some of that's to do with the fraps capture, but an awful lot of it is to do with the fact that it's just not well optimized. When I tested this without the capture running, I was dropping down to 40, sometimes less in some areas. So the performance with extra quality on is even worse. And again, it's not just a... Oh god, look at that. That is the most hideous looking cloth texture I've ever seen. Needless to say, of course, can't put holes in it. I don't believe NVIDIA physics is actually supported. If it is, I'd be surprised. Uh, I mean, you know, example after example, really, of just really poor quality texture work, which combines into uh, this sort of dated-looking mess of a game, really. So let's compare it to some of the visuals that we saw in the video and see just really how much of a difference there is between the two. I think as you can clearly see, the difference is not that large. And you, of course, will see an improvement in graphical fidelity. But you're not going to see anything particularly significant. It still looks dated in comparison to other shooters that are coming out right now. Which I think is one of the most important things you need to consider when looking at a game like this. It's pretty damn vital. Because, really, you would expect better. Considering that Battlefield 4 just came out recently and blows this game out of the water in terms of its graphical fidelity, that's something to be concerned about. Now, I want to jump out of this because there's one more correction that I want to make here, and that is the idea of the pick 10 system. So, in Black Ops 2, you had this pick 10 system where you had 10 points that you could assign to different things in your loadout. Will you just, like, let me get out of here? That, that would be wonderful. Thank you. Those blood textures look like something from the original Quake. Anyway, the pick 10 system was in Black Ops 2. And it's very obvious because it had a big number in the corner that says, yeah, this is how many perks you've got. And it was set up to easily explain what you were doing. However, this system does exist here, but it's not obvious. Because you'll notice there's no 10 anywhere. So if we look at perks right here, you'll see that I can take four. Now, I believe if I actually remove some of these items... You see a little bit more space comes in here for extra perks. So the pick 10 is there. Very much so. And it's actually letting me pick all of them in my private lobby, which is nice. It lets you unlock pretty much everything if you're playing private lobbies. The pick 10 is there, but it's less obvious, which is a little annoying. I'm not really sure why I didn't make that more obvious. It would have made sense just to have the number in the corner, just like Black Ops 2, but they didn't. So I just want to correct people and make sure that they are aware that I did make a mistake. There's one other thing I would like to make people aware of before I sign this video off. You can't alt-tab out of a game. No, I'm deadly serious. You can't do it. You can't Windows key either, which is infuriating, I might add, because, well, that's basic PC functionality. You can't do it. You can do it in the menu, yeah, the very, very back menu, as in this one right here, but you can't do it in-game. I have no idea why that is. It's just unacceptable for this day and age, but it is the case. So there you go, a few corrections and a few comparisons between high and extra on the same map there, and hopefully that gives you a little bit more detail and fills in a couple of the blanks that were very much my fault, and I'm very sorry. Unfortunately, I was rushed on this video, but that's no excuse. I'll see you next time.